Um, wow, there's about 75 questions in there. Um, I'll answer the, f the last one first. I wasn't at all determined to take on this role. In fact, when it was originally offered to me, I turned it down. Um, in spite of being an enormous fan of uh, Michael Neuer, the filmmaker, and it really actively um, been pursuing trying to work with him, and even in spite of that, when I initially got offered this, because I shared what I'm sensing is a little bit of a, just a, a gut reaction bias about the idea of remaking this film, which I told, I mean, I shared it, and I totally understand why people feel that way, but then when I met, I, I, I said, you know, so I turned it down, and then another actor accepted it, and, uh, and I thought, man, I might have made a mistake here, because I love that actor, he's a heavyweight, and then something happened with the film that he was doing, and he, and he fell out, and they came back to me, and I said, you know what? I've been thinking about it, and I'd gone back and I'd reread the book, torturing myself, even though I knew this other dude was then had the role that I'd been offered and turned down. And I went and I, I, I uh, started thinking about it. So then when Michael said, is there any way you could meet me in New York? Because he was in Denmark and I was in LA. I said, I'm actually in New York for the next two days. He said, I'm gonna come on a plane tomorrow. You, you just like give me two hours. And I wasn't sure if I like wanted to get into it with him, you know what I mean? So I said, all right, I got two hours as well because I got this other meeting and I didn't have another meeting. And then that two hours like went up and he's like, you got another meeting? I was like, nah, I was just bullshitting you in case I wanted to leave early, you know? And we spent 14 hours together. And by the end of it, we realized we were both obsessed with this phenomenon of privatization of prisons, which has been happening in the US and then all over the world. It's funny, the first time I ever came across this, it was my financial advisor advocating me to invest in prison stock. And what you have to understand, it's a rigged game because the value of those stocks raise and fall dependent upon the occupancy of the prison. But if you are then own the prison and get to choose, decide, or at least be a deciding factor in how long those people stay in that prison, then like any commodity, it's trading at 100% of its value at all times because it's operating at 100% of its potential at all times. Now that's all well and good if you're a business person or investor, but if you're the person who did some small thing that was like out of character and they got embroiled in that system and all of a sudden two years or eight months turns into four years and you come out and you're not fit for regular society anymore. So what the French government were trying to do with French Guiana prison colony was they were trying to colonize French Guiana. But to begin with, they had to cut down trees, build roads. And so this prison, this prison colony was really ostensibly a labor camp to generate money. And we thought, when we made that connection, for us, it was like, you know what? Forget the first film, forget this predecessor. This is a real, a story of a real man who really, you know, who existed in a beloved, important piece of source material. And all of a sudden, like, all my reservations just went away. And I said, let's go tell, let's go make the movie we want to make and forget, like, that our predecessor, forget the bias, forget all of the inevitable comparison we're going to have to endure, and just go make a movie we want to make. So that's what we did. Yeah, I mean, I didn't want to want to see. I'd just done it once before. I just uh, did a, a film called The Lost City of Zed, where I'd gone from 185 pounds to 145 pounds. And it was eight months later when I started doing this film. And uh, I did exactly the same thing that I'd done to lose all that leg weight the first time. My body just didn't want to do it this time. It wasn't responding the same way. And so I had to be really hard on myself. The first time when I did it for Lost City of Zed, I felt good the whole time. I lost 40 pounds in 10 weeks, but I did it healthy and I felt good. And, I was fit, and then this time I just felt horrible. And so I wasn't very nice to work with, I don't think, on this film. Like, I, everyone's really nice to me here, but there's a couple of, like, days where I was, like, brutal on set. Yeah, I mean, that's like, that was our second aspiration with this whole thing. So we wanted to do a deeply uh, uh, satisfying, the one that we needed a love story. I mean, we needed a deeply satisfying relationship. And what's great about these guys is that. You know, I have a theory that, like, that, that is very interesting in storytelling to introduce characters, male characters predominantly, in prison or war. Because it's this unifying environment where you don't get to see the context of anybody else's like, life or personality that colors it. But you get the sense that these, two, that these two men in this film are men that would never ordinarily enter each other's orbits. And then because of necessity and the, this unlikely friendship blossoms and turns into what we hope is like a really satisfying relationship. 
Because that's ultimately the entire film, is that relationship, so that doesn't work for fuck. <laughs>